Good morning, my beautiful friends. So today, we're talking about two complicated topics connected by a third, and that is being intentional, being spontaneous, and always learning something new. So, the reason I was thinking about it is I have been trying to be more intentional with my time. So, I spend a lot of time in front of a computer because that's my job, and that's the work that I do. So I'm constantly in front of a screen. And when I'm in my offices, I have many screens. When I'm at home, I have less screens, but still a lot of work, right? And I'm constantly on a screen. I'm constantly on a computer. So I have been trying to, for health-wise to try to get up, you know, every 20 to 30 minutes, walk around, you know, get my blood moving and come and sit back down. But when I'm not working, I'm trying to be very intentional about not doing work, not checking my email, not checking my text, being intentional about my time and doing other things. Um, so, you know, I've been thinking about intentionality and what that means. And, and uh, you know, we have to make the intention to give ourselves breaks and we have to be intentional about our time for reflection and our time for spiritual growth and also academic growth or what, you know, healthy strides or whatever it is we're trying to accomplish. So, I was thinking, like, you know, is that juxtaposed to being spontaneous? Because I am, um, you know, I am a by the seat of your pants kind of girl. I like to be, I like to live in the present and be spontaneous. And I feel like spontaneity can be intentional. I feel like those aren't opposites necessarily. Um, I think you can set time and be intentional about time. And then in that time, you can be spontaneous to do a new thing or learn something new or, you know, whatever. Um, I think we get stuck in ruts, or at least I do. You know, like I wake up very early in the morning, 4, 30, 5 o'clock. I start working right away. Um, you know, I, I do my way in I do my, my sugar check. Um, and then, you know, I go about my day. And then usually I'll, I'll maybe take a little nap around 6 a.m. until I start work. Um, I'd start work at nine, but I really start at eight. I, I work all the time. So I'm trying to be more intentional about the things that I do to edify myself to get ready for the day. And one of them is being intentional, like what is my day going to be about? And I've had good practices in the past of picking a rune or um, meditating on a word and, and having that word on a chalkboard right near me so that I could think about it. Um, but I fall out of those practices because I get busy or I forget. Sometimes I'm lazy, you know, so um, I'm trying to be more intentional, especially about spirituality and, and especially about learning new things. I'm a person who loves to learn new things. Um, I, I'm always I'm always uh, interested when I watch uh, different YouTubers, uh, not so much in my witch community, but in other YouTubers, you know, like big channels and all that, you know, they, they uh, espouse knowledge or, you know, spew it out, but they don't really watch other channels and they don't support small channels. Um, you know, because they, they have the corner market on what they want to talk about, but they're not really listeners or learners. And, um, I don't want to be like that. So, um, you know, when I read a book and there's books mentioned in the book, I'll look them up and see if I like them. Um, I read, uh, I was, I'm reading a book where I talked about another book called Iona, which was written in 1799 and it's in the public domain. And unfortunately I have to read it on the computer, which I do still prefer physical books. I'm not an audiobook person. I'm not a Kindle reader, but I've had to do that. You know, I've had to do that. I've had to read Kindle editions and, and things like that. So, um, but anyway, this book about Iona is, uh, about the historical, uh, the Druid, um, influence and, and the Druid College that was at Iona before uh, it was Christianized by St. Columba. So, uh, you know, so I, I'm trying to just be more intentional to be more rooted in learning and learning from others. I learned so much from, from my spirit sisters, uh, different practices. Um, so Silver, like, always has great videos. I've learned so much about um, Alicia's culture. Um, I learned so much from Witchy Farm Girl. Um, from her, uh, cause she's a homesteader, you know, I learned so much from my sisters and I, and I learn a lot from the different channels that I watch. Um, but you know, learning is reciprocal, right? So we learn from others and others learn from us. And, and that's, um, that's how we evolve, you know, as a, as a conscious species, right? Um, you know, but I think one of the lures of the internet is to just be a consumer of things and not to, uh, to, um, 
you know, listen or learn from others. And, and we really need to do that. We need to really listen and learn from others. So anyway, let's pull a rune, see what today brings for us. Um, <coughs> I have his head cold. And I would like to thank the makers of Alka-Seltzer Coplus for their fine efforts. I want to do some fire cider after this video, but once I do that, then I have to lay down and sleep because it knocks me out. So we have our stones, Green Man, Iona stones, Icelandic stones, and our Bridget coin. And we're just going to ask Spirit to give us a message for the day. What should be our focus? What should be where we spend our energy? What should we keep in the back of our mind? What should we meditate on? feel called to mention that I have a new stone that I actually got in a box and I don't know if you can see it but to me it looks like an angel and um, it's funny every time I have it up my cats are super interested in it but it's uh, it's really pretty it just looks like an angel and I keep it now in my rune box and um, this one looks like it wants to come in ah Infinity Stone. Hmm. Let me go think about that and see what that might have to say for us. I'll be right back. I should have told you the name of the stone. It's Dagus. So Dagus, I call it the Infinity Stone. And just to give you some words to put with it, um, it is. It represents dawn. It translates to dawn, and it symbolizes awakening. Awakening certainty, illumination, completion, and hope. And it's, an, it's a tremendous stone, right? It's all about the cycle of life and the continuation, almost like infinity. You know, the cycles go around and, you know, they make a complete circle. Um, but it is, a, it is a beautiful stone that just, you know, it reminds us that, um, you know, we have the power within us to power through the storms of life and the dawns of life and all of the seasons that, you know, come together to make our lives, right? So whatever season you're in now, you know, it, it will complete. It'll, it'll move into something different, good and bad, right? And remember, bad doesn't necessarily mean bad. Bad is lessons, you know, lessons that were given from the spirit world, of things that we need to learn in this lifetime. So, um, you know, being intentional, I feel like, um, you know, today I, w I really want to think about um, you know, what these seasons are and what the, what the blessings are and what's been completed and where hope lies and what needs, uh, you know, sort of the next iteration. Um, I get, I tend to get stuck because I'm a person who's very passionate and loves to learn new things and loves to do new things. And, and, um, you know, so I get bored, right? Because then when nothing's going on, I feel like I have no, no goal. I'm a very goal driven person and I, and I like to set goals and meet them and stuff. And if I have nothing on my, in my bucket list, then, um, or nothing achievable immediately in my bucket list, then I feel like, you know, like there's a, you know, a drought. And, uh, and so being intentional about each and every day will help me not to feel those droughts so heavily. Will it happen? Of course it'll happen, but, but I won't feel them as heavily. So let us get some cards. Uh, let's start with Ascension, and then we'll go over to some Celtic cards. I do like these cards. These are new cards, and I do really like them. I mean, the artwork, you know, as I've said before, I'm not always drawn to artwork and cards. I'm more drawn to the message. I'm, I'm not so drawn to the books. In the beginning, when I first start with a, a deck, I'll, I'll read the book, which I'm still reading the book for this one. Um, but then once I get comfortable with cards and I feel like I can read them. I don't read the book anymore. And I go by intuition. But these these cards are uh, they're very nice. They're very handy. Alright, whatever pops out. Three passes. We do things in threes. Like the druids of old. Ugh. 
head is full of cheese. These cards always come out in groups, which I think is interesting. Pretty consistent as a deck if they come out in groups. So these two that came out together are Freedom, which I got yesterday, and Vulnerability is Power. Hmm. Those are interesting cards to come out together. The numbers are 7 and 14. I'm going to go and read this, and I'll be back to tell you what it means. So there... These are two fascinating cards that come out together. The vul vulnerability is power is about um, when people see you as weak, you know, like we always put on an armor to make ourselves look stronger and smarter or whatever, res more resilient than we are uh, because we don't want people to see our true selves. They don't want to see that we have weaknesses. And, th and that's true of everybody. That's what we do. <coughs> it's a... Uh, it's a self-defense mechanism, you know, in the animal kingdom, you know, a, you know, a, a turtle doesn't look vulnerable, right? It needs to look strong so that it doesn't get swooped up by a predator. So, you know, this card is about like, you, there's power in vul vulnerability and there's power in letting people know um, that you're not perfect. I really do try to make sure people know that I'm not perfect. And, and, uh, you know, people are always so kind and have so many compliments and I try to always really remain humble and say, you know, I have all kinds of, all kinds of issues, like everybody else, right? Um, you know, and, and one of, one of my issues, of course, is being too busy, um, you know, and not making time for reflection and uh, learning and, and things that are, are good for my soul, you know, because I'm so, uh, so busy. And the freedom card, which I think is a pretty card, and I'm not normally drawn to graphics, but I think that's a really pretty card. It has this quote that kicks it off. It says, it's easy to stand in the crowd, but it takes courage to stand alone. And I've always said that I would prefer to be in front of a crowd of 50,000. I know a lot of people don't like public speaking, but I don't mind it. Um, I'd rather be in front of a crowd of 50,000 people than in a crowd of 50,000 people. I don't like to be in crowds. Um... And, uh, and this card is all about, you know, boldly stand in your light and co-create a greater world through love. Anchor in the light by always following your own heart and truth. And again, just a reminder that whatever spiritual practice you embrace, you know, like your truth is your truth and your truth is okay, whatever your truth is. Um, you know, we, we hear from modern religion, ancient religions, that there's only one truth in one way, um, you know, but we know from our hearts that you know light and love spreading light and love whatever you call it whether you call it christianity or judaism or or whatever you know spreading light and love is our goal that's the the one worldwide humanity goal whatever you call it so um let's see i'm gonna do earth wisdom let's see what earth wisdom has to say so i would love to know ways in which you are are trying to be intentional you have any good tricks that I could that I could adopt and share on the channel um, I'm just trying to get up and stand up every so many minutes and um, and I, I make a conscious I I know this seems like such a ridiculous and small thing but for me this is a big thing at the end of the workday I close my lid on my laptop and I walk away from it and I go and I sit outside with birds or I go sit and I read on my couch but I have to be intentional in closing the lid of my laptop. I have to, to make that break away from work. All right. Spirit's like, you haven't used us in a while. Pass one. If you're new to the channel, we do three passes. We do everything in threes. All right. What do we have? We have awareness. These are very pretty cards. Again, not, I'm, I'm not really ever kind of drawn in by the artwork. I mean, they're pretty, but, you know, awareness. Be aware of all that's around you. She's aware of, she's walking towards something, you know, the full moon, and, and she's aware of the things around her. And then we have big picture, strength, and heal thyself. So those are good. Um, you know, I don't know, those three together... 
I think, you know, just knowing the big picture and, and knowing that you're supported will help you heal things if you, if you have issues or if you have, um, if you have areas in your life that you need the, those vulnerabilities, right? It'll take strong strength, but it also takes seeing the big picture. Sometimes we can get really rooted down into the minutia of a problem that we can't see the bigger picture and we can't solve it because really what's at the root is healing ourselves, right? We have to heal what's going on inside us. All right. And we will do one more, Jack. What should we do? We should do my, my favorites. One of my sisters has been reading these cards, too. It's great to see her watch her read them, too. Um, I love when other people use the same cards I do because I love to hear their interpretation. She uses the book. I've, uh, I, I've not used the book in a long time because I kind of just read from intuition. But let's see. You know, so we're going into spiritual awakening. The fall is always a time when I feel like I'm, I'm becoming more spiritually awakened. I feel like in the summer I get too distracted, so that'll be de definitely something I have to work on in my seasons um, in, the, in the summer. But the fall, I always feel more reconnected. Fall is my favorite season. Autumn. have the hair and portal came out together very interesting again the portal is change gateway and new beginnings okay going along with that infinity stone other world shape shifting and fertility you know and in the celtic world we we aren't able to pass through a new portal a new learning experience until we've a, mastered the one before it, and B, accepted the idea that we can go through this new portal, right? We've accepted that we want to learn more. So, um, you know, this is giving you, all the cards are giving you an okay. It's giving you a, like a, a cosmic okay to work on yourself. That can be your goal. That can be your your mission, that can be your intention to work on yourself, to work on the things that bring you joy, to work on how you deal with grief or conflict, right? Sometimes we need an okay to say, yes, you've been out there helping everybody else in the free world. It is okay to sit down and help yourself, right? And there's hope in that. And there's, there's a need for that. There's a need to be intentional. Yes, you can still be spontaneous, right? Um, you can set aside time and say, I don't know what I'm going to do in that time. And then when that time comes, you know, you can be spontaneous in what you choose to help you grow your own heart and soul and spirit, right? Um, those, those aren't opposites. But when you fill every minute of every day with work or helping other people with their things and you don't feed yourself, you know, I've used this example before, but it is so true. You, you know, on the airplane, they always tell you put your own mask first on first before you put it on somebody else because you can't help them if you're dead. Th that is true in the spiritual world too. Put your mask on, feed your soul, be intentional about it, allow for creativity and spontaneity in, by being intentional about allowing yourself permission, time, and space. And as you grow, you'll be able to help others grow. And you can learn from others. Um, you can feed your soul by learning from others. You can feed your soul by reflecting on, on the words and messages of others. So I am wishing you all the very best in light and love. Be well. Take care. Bye-bye.